It's been one of the hottest arguments in the province over the past few weeks. A resolution by the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario to rid schools of the name of Canada's first Prime Minister, Sir John A. Macdonald, has brought home a debate that first erupted in the United States. How should the present commemorate the past? Joining us now to consider that in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Negan Sinclair, Graduate Program Director at the Department of Native Studies at the University of Manitoba. And here in our studio, Tori Kress, Ontario co-founder of the Idle No More movement. And Christopher Dummett, Associate Professor in Trent University's School for the Study of Canada. He's also the author of Unbuttoned, A History of Mackenzie King's Secret Life. Negan, good to have you uh, in Points Beyond and you two here in our studio. Lovely to have you guys here as well. Let's just set this up if we can. There are 10 schools in the province of Ontario. They're named after Sir Johnny Macdonald, six elementary, four secondary schools. There's the map of where you can find them. And in a poll last month by Angus Reid, 57% of Ontarians opposed renaming schools after Sir Johnny Macdonald. 25% supported it. Let's basically go around the horn here and get a sense of where you are all on this issue. Negan, start us off here on this issue of whether Sir John A's name ought to be taken off current schools. What's your view? Well, Steve, thanks for having me on. Uh, it's, it's quite simple, really. Uh, I want everyone to imagine for a moment that you have a, uh, uh, a leader who's commanded the um, deaths of your family, the removal of your children, and then the forcible relocation of your lives onto somewhere else. Then I want you to imagine that you have a, you live in a community where that person is revered, uh, places that are um, uh, educational institutions are named after that person, and then you get a tiny glimpse into what it's felt like to be an Indigenous person for 150 years. It's quite simple when you see it that way. For Indigenous people, if they're truly to be a part of this country, uh, and we're to start having a meaningful, responsible, ethical relationship, then perhaps we should think about well, how we revere people. In which case, does that involve taking the first prime minister's names off existing structures? Absolutely. I, I don't see why that shouldn't uh, take place. There's many, many people in this country who should be revered, and Sir John A. Macdonald perhaps shouldn't be one of them. Okay, gotcha now. Tori, how, what's your position on this? Um, I echo a lot of exactly what Negan said, mm -hmm. and uh, I really support the teachers taking this initiative to move forward on this, and that it's Canadians that have um, made this this decision. I support the dis this decision that they made. That you know, our children are being educated with the historical untruths not being told. We are not being shown the full history. And being an Ontario student myself, I know exactly what I learned and what I didn't learn. And the knowledge that I have now is because I went out into the world and taught myself our history. And in, in turn, now I'm doing that at home with my own children. But that's not happening in every Ontario home. I'm inferring from your comment that you were not taught when you went, when you were a product of the school system, that Sir John A established residential schools and all of I that. I was not taught that at all. And the word savage was used in the textbooks and your entire class turns around and looks at you. It's, you know, it's pretty significant and it's pretty, it's, it's a horrifying experience to feel like you're, you know, an inch tall because everyone's looking at you because you were just called a savage. So take the names off the buildings. Absolutely. Christopher. Well, I guess I'm here to uh, give, give the opposite perspective. Well, first of all, I, I entirely understand why uh, some Indigenous people would want that the case. I think, uh, I think that's for exactly the reasons you were just saying. I, I get it. Um, as a historian, I would say that uh, everyone's history is complex and everyone's history has, uh, has these wars. Uh, and Johnny MacDonald is uh, similar to many national founders found amongst all peoples. So uh, I can also can say in the university system, I, we've been teaching this uh, about the residential school system, about all the kinds of things that have been in the news for decades now. This is exactly what we teach. This is nothing new. I think what's happening is this is filtering out in an interesting way, and I'm not, I can't explain why that's happening. I don't support it. Um, uh, I think that... You don't support taking the names I don't the support taking the names off the schools. I think that you don't get to choose who your national founders are. Uh, and I think this is a good example of saying why history is, in fact, complex, that no one has a kind of moral, uh, morally pure blank slate. And I'm, I think it has a lot to do, um, you know, th this proposal comes forward not from Indigenous peoples, but from the Teachers Federation. And I think this is about contemporary politics, and it's about saying that this is what we value now. And I think a more positive step uh, would be to create new schools with different kinds of heroes that reflect the values that these people want now, and I would completely support that. You don't get to choose your own founding fathers, that's true. 
they predate us. We inherited them. But you do get to, to choose how you want to honor them and whether you want to put their names up on public buildings. And apparently, in our wisdom, we have chosen to put Sir John A's name on 10 schools across the province. What do you want to do? If, if you acknowledge all of what everybody has just said, is the next obvious step, well, then we've got to take the names down. No, I don't think so at all. I think, um, I think you can look at the incredible positive legacy that John McDonald created. Which is what? Which is, uh, well, creating the country. If you look at our original constitution, how we come together as a nation, uh, you know, people at the time said that most of, the, most of that constitution comes from John McDonald. He didn't get everything he wanted, but he got a lot of what he wanted. Now, you might say, who cares about the constitution? Uh, but actually, I think even, even from our contemporary values, you can find a legacy of inclusiveness, not towards indigenous peoples, but towards uh, the, the French and English in Canada, uh, which was int intrinsic to the creation of a successful political party in, in nation in Canada. And why does that matter? Well, I think it matters because, you know, a recent book on the history of multiculturalism said that one of the reasons why Canada moves towards very earlier than most countries uh, getting race sort of its immigration policy uh, uh, starts, and starts to kind of acknowledge new Canadians kind of ethnic backgrounds and not assuming that they should assimilate. One of the reasons that comes earlier in Canada is exactly because of this, this history of dealing with difference within the country. Mm. Not all difference, absolutely not all difference, but with in some difference. So I think there's a real case to be made that there's something interesting and unique about this. Nigan, let me go back to you on this, and, and I, I guess one of the problems of having a, um, a famous and respected father, as you do, Senator Murray Sinclair, is that uh, current affairs program hosts are going to want to quote your father to you and then have you <laughs> comment on that. So here goes. Uh, your dad recently said, of course, he being the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, said, the problem I have with the overall approach to tearing down statues and buildings is that it is counterproductive to reconciliation because it almost smacks of revenge or smacks of acts of anger. But in reality, what we are trying to do is we are trying to create more balance in the relationship. What's your view of your father's comments? Oh, absolutely. And I think my father's move to try to get us to think about indigenous peoples that we should be revering as a country is an important move. Um, I don't think anyone's talking about tearing down buildings, and uh, I would correct my father in that to say that we are talking simply about uh, having conversations around names. Um, there, Sir Johnny McDonald's not going away anytime soon at all, ever. Um, there is a train line that goes right by my house. My children ask me, how did it get there? And I, explo I explain to them the history. Uh, my children ask me, why is it that our reserve is in a location? And I explain because we have a history. Uh, my children ask, why is it that there was so much violence or poverty today? And I explain that we have a history. And Sir Johnny MacDonald is responsible for much of that history. He's the architect of much of that history. And no, no one in any part of this debate is ever saying we need to erase Sir John A. MacDonald from the history books. He'll still be there. He's still very much a part of my life right here in 2017. What I am saying, uh, what most of us are saying, um, by joining with the teachers union in this, is that we need to have a conversation about really who we revere in this country, who do we hold up, and then who do we teach our children about as people that they should emulate, that they should look to. Um, and I find this, this argument around everyone has warts in history to be rather convenient um, for, the mo for the mere fact that uh, we're not talking about warts here. We're talking about death, destruction, the removal of children, and what people call genocide. This isn't warts. This, this is violence. Violence is violence, whether it be in 1867 or whether it be in 2017. If I'm going, Tory, though, to draw an inference from what Senator Sinclair had to say, it's that if it's about reconciliation, you don't help the cause of reconciliation by taking the name of the founding father of one of the most successful countries in the world, uh, and let's acknowledge his entire record. You don't help the cause of reconciliation by pulling that name off public buildings and insulting the majority of the people in the country. What do you think of that view? Uh, I'm, I don't agree with that view. I think it, it's significant for all children to be able to walk into these schools and not have a sense of... Um, triggering effect from those those effects of all of those policies that he created that was to be our demise that Do you think that out... really happens? Do you think when Indigenous kids walk into a school called Sir John A. Macdonald, it, it, it triggers that kind of it effect? It absolutely could trigger that effect because could, we're said... still living with those policies and those effects of those policies. It's not history to Indigenous people. Mm -hmm. It's still a very much real thing happening as our children are still being taken away and put into foster homes.
I'm trying to find out whether or not there's a, whether there's a sweet spot of compromise somewhere. Uh, I, I, th I mean, you've said it. You can totally understand why somebody who has an Indigenous history in this country uh, you know, would be appalled to walk into a school with that man's name, given the history, on that school. Um, but obviously the majority of Canadians think Sir John A is important enough to put on a school and leave his name there. How do we solve this? Um, well, we've been through this before. It's one of the things that's interesting. Uh, Nigan was saying that, uh, um, you know, the historian is not, is not going away. But in fact, he could go away in the way that, in, in, with, with a positive interpretation of John, he could very much go away. Uh, in the 1950s and 60s, uh, you know, as part of a kind of tr tr attempt to create a kind of more a a Canada which wasn't British, we, we got rid of a whole series of British names and British connections that would have celebrated Canada's British past. And they're, and they're pretty much gone now. Canada Day was Dominion Day. Who, who, who remembers that? Uh, so I think it can go, it can go away, and we're, we're really thinking about talking about whether we want to obliterate a certain interpretation of the past. And I get why some people would. Uh, but I think it's dangerous too. You know, I just wrote a book about Mackenzie King, and Mackenzie King's policy on all these things was never, uh, uh, it was dampened down on criticism, was dampened down on tensions, try to solve the issues but not inflame the passions. Uh, because, if you, you know, I, I think of the example of the, of, the, of the Mounties in the 80s and the turban as an example which is very different than this. You know, I, I still teach about all, all the intent, incredible tension that this uh, caused in that time, and my students just don't get it now. They think they, they, to them, seeing an image of a mountie with a turban is absolutely fine. And I think what's different about that example is that what you did is you took a, a, you know, a certain kind of cane symbol and you just added to it. You didn't take it away, but you added to it and said, why can't, we also, why can't this also be the case? Well, let me pick up on that. Nigan, um, I was in Ottawa last week, and uh, I went to a cemetery where there are a lot of notable Canadians that are buried. And one of the guys who's buried there is a fellow who I'd never heard of before named Nicholas Flood Davin. And, uh, you know, of course, the headstone says lots of nice things about him. Man of letters, journalist, former member of parliament from Manitoba, in fact. A and then there was a plaque put beside his headstone uh, by, by a more modern group which said, oh, and incidentally, this guy was the, f was the writer of the report uh, which created residential schools, which McDonald and his government took up, and uh, the result of which has been tantamount to cultural genocide. And I wonder if that is a way forward. You have, the re you have you know, some part of the population respecting the past with the name on the school, but maybe a plaque in addition, contextualizing the, the rest of the story, if you like. What do you think of that option? Well, I think schools are places where these conversations need to happen. Um, I find that the idea that we're going to somehow forget that we're in any time that the, the British came and colonized ca Canada, we, we, it will never be forgotten. And I think uh, naming, uh, changing the name on a day from Dominion Day to Canada Day is a is an absolute absurd suggestion that we would forget that the Brit, the British people have come and taken this country. Um, however, uh, at the same time, I, I think that schools are places of these conversations, or these conversations need to happen. However, the conversation is is one-sided, dominating, and fully, it is still a very sanitized conversation. Uh, I walk into any school, first thing I see is uh, you know, markers of the Canadian state. Um, there's, uh, there's a certain song that's sung at the beginning of the day, the way that people dress, the way the building is built, the stories that are told. Uh, these are, you know, changing the name is one important step in a very large conversation. But and I, I recognize that you know that these are, these are big changes. It's very traumatic for Canadians to see the history of what Canada really is, and so perhaps incremental changes like you're suggesting is important. However, I'm I, I don't think Canada is that kind of place that uh, we all want to have small sort of changes that really are uh, insignificant in the longer scheme of things. We need to change the country in a very significant way if we're to reach reconciliation. That means being adults. That means being responsible citizens with one another and looking at each other's experience and including them in our own educational paths. Fair enough, but Tori, uh, you saw in that poll earlier, the majority of Canadians, a significant majority of Canadians, uh, you know, presumably think it'd be insulting to take Sir John A's name off the buildings. I understand why you believe it is insulting to have his name on the buildings. Adding a plaque, putting his contribution, negative and positive to Canada in context, what do you think that would achieve? I don't think that's going to achieve much because it, putting a disclaimer on the, okay, but there's this part of the story. I mean, it's, how is that engaging with people in any sort of way? And you're not teaching anything. These teachers have made a significant step. And that's where we need to start is with elementary school children because those are the young minds that are just being formed. And we want to give them the whole truth, not just, you know, 
here's your consolation plaque with the disclaimer that's several pages mm -hmm. long you're going to have to flip through. Uh, Premier Wynne mused the other day about, uh, you know, maybe if going forward we should all just be PS1, PS2, PS3, just number it like they do in New York City. What do you think of that idea? I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Opposed to that. <laughs> no. Christopher, let me get your take on this, because I think you were involved in this effort a couple of years ago at Wilfrid Laurier University to put up statues of all our former, almost all of our former prime ministers. And um, that went crashing down to earth with a thud um, for lack of support. Um, what was your takeaway from that whole incident? Um, well, I wasn't involved to, to raise them. I, I just I had the temerity to suggest it wouldn't be such a terrible idea if, if they had them in the first place. You know, if a citizens group came together, put the money together, put them there. Uh, my takeaway is that it's hard to erect anything to, to a Canadian uh, politician, former politician. I know what they're saying about the power of, of the Canadian legacy, but I think right now, uh, anytime someone suggests that a former former prime minister uh, may, may not have been a bad guy, I think there are going to be a se whole series of citizens standing up to do that. Um, I mean, I think the irony of this is that this is coming up in the context of U.S. debates, right? And this happens in Canada all the time, is that something happens in the U.S., People in Canada say, well, you know, Canada is just like that. And there's a kind of uh, uh, attempt to make an equivalence. And I, I don't think that there, there, there really is an equivalence to what you're talking about in the U.S. South. Well, in the U.S., uh, I mean, those guys are traitors, right? I mean, they were, they were basically trying to break up the country. The fact that you would have a statue up to a traitor is a kind of a different flavor on this debate, wouldn't you Although say? Well, I mean, we have that, you know, at the time, in 1869, 70, 1885, Riel was seen as a traitor. You know, people came to, came, have come to see him a lot differently since then. So what counts as traitor changes over time. Negan, maybe we can take the last 30 seconds here and give it to you and say, okay, going forward, let's name a school after an important indigenous figure from the history of this land. Give us some names that belong up on schools. Oh, well, we've done it right here in Manitoba. I mean, uh, Sergeant Tommy Prince comes to mind. Uh, Tecumseh comes to mind. Uh, there, there's leaders, uh, St. Kateri. Um, there's leaders that have come all throughout modern time as well. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, we have leaders that uh, all walk through the founders of Idle No More are really important leaders as well, Sylvia McAdam. I mean, these are really significant. There are sign you don't have to look very far to find Indigenous leaders throughout uh, history and today that, uh, you know, Louis Riel is only beginning to scratch the surface. You know, um, I heard somebody the other day say Joseph Brandt was a significant Indigenous figure from the history of this land. There's a hospital in Burlington named after him. There are towns named after him. But he owned slaves. And that is somewhat problematic in terms of future recognition. Uh, so I guess I repeat the question. This is more complicated than it first seems, Raz? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. The, <laughs> the issue of, of naming uh, buildings after historical figures is very complex and it's a conversation that uh, needs to be had between responsible peoples who want to say who do we want to hold up as a nation and I think this conversation if anything the teachers have showed us through this conversation is that this um, this conversation needs to happen needs to happen today mm. well I'm glad we had a little bit of it here on TVO tonight Negan James Sinclair from the University of Manitoba thanks for joining us on the line from Winnipeg anyway. and here in our studio in Toronto Christopher Dummett associate professor Trent University School for the Study of Canada Tori Kress co-founder of Idle No More Ontario. Thanks so much to you too as Thanks well. Thanks for having me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit tvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.